Hi everyone, welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is week two in my series on my IKEA craft room and today we're going to go over paper storage. Those of you that are card makers, mixed media using paper, or those that scrapbook, I think today's information is going to be most appealing to you. I have always admired IKEA storage solutions, not only because of the price point, but simply because of the organization. You'll see my Calex unit behind me. This was purchased from IKEA. But let's also discuss about the inserts that are inside there. Let's head over and take a look. This is the Calex unit from IKEA. And you're going to notice as I move in a little bit closer that there's actually two pieces here. The first piece on the bottom has four cubes across and four down. I'm going to call it a four by four. I will be linking all the product information down in the video description below if you are here from YouTube. The piece on the top is one shelf across with four cubes, what I'm calling a one by four. My husband, Bob the Builder, did bolt these two pieces together for stability as well as bolting them to the wall. It is extremely heavy with all the cardstock in it, but he wanted to be very cautious. Now let's talk about the inserts here. Over the years, I have tried many, many different ways of storing my cardstock, and this by far has been the best. These inserts that you'll see here are actually made by a company called Stamp and Storage. And again, I'll link it below. I opted to purchase the 12 by 12 inserts that fit perfectly in the IKEA Calex unit. They do offer one that's eight and a half by 11. It does leave you a small margin here on the side. For those of you that are scrapbookers, you might be able to use that area well for scrapbooking albums. Most importantly, I can tell you about this if you're going to order these, is make sure that you count how many slots that you need. The ones that I've purchased here have 12 slots. I find that they will hold two full packages of Stampin' Up! cardstock without any problem whatsoever. I can probably get in a couple extra sheets as well. The white and the black down here are colors that I use very frequently, so I've doubled up those spaces. And you might be wondering, if those are 12 by 12 inserts, how is your 8.5 by 11 fitting really well? Well, again, kudos to my husband. He cut a small PVC pipe to absorb the depth of this so that the 8.5 by 11 cardstock would not slip all the way to the back of the unit. Total cost of those little PVC pipes was about $6 and it did this entire Calex unit. I've chosen to store my cardstock in a rainbow order. I originally tried just putting it in alphabetical order, which is how I keep my scraps, but it didn't aesthetically look very good. And I'm going to link that list down in the video description here below for you. And you also might be wondering how it holds up being stored vertically. And you know, I was a skeptic. So I tried it for a couple weeks and I have been thrilled with it. I don't find that there's any bowing whatsoever in the cardstock. And I live in Florida where it's very, very warm and we have a lot of humidity. All my eight and a half by 11 cardstock is across the top. And then there's a little bit more on the second shelf here, but then I'm going to move right into designer series papers. These two here are actually 12 by 12 designer series papers. And again, you're looking at this thinking probably that it's going to be warped and it's not. So let me pull it out and show you. I have it here flat on the surface and you can see that there is no bowing in the paper whatsoever. You also might be wondering what the sheet protector is for. Whenever I have small scraps of designer series paper, rather than just putting them back in the slot, I found that putting them in sheet protectors makes them really easy to get to. Don't skimp on the sheet protectors. I'm going to recommend that you buy the good ones, the ones from Avery. They're a thicker plastic and they're going to hold up to a lot of usage in and out of those slots. Although I store my designer series paper scraps in a sheet protector here, I don't do that for my eight and a half by 11 cardstock scraps. And I'll go over that with you in just a minute. So these are my 12 by 12 designer series papers. But as we get closer over here, these are six by six and simply the same thing that we've done before. There are pre-cut PVC pipes in the back of these as well, which allows us to make sure that the paper doesn't slide all the way to the back. And because these are eight and a half by 11 sheet protectors holding the designer paper, it holds it in place perfectly. The storage area here on the bottom is a mixture of things that just make me happy and things that I need. Things that I access on a regular basis, I've opted to use open storage as well as baskets, making it easy for me to get in and out. This white box here does come with a lid and you'll find these at Ikea, really inexpensive and they simply snap together. The baskets across the bottom 
hold those things that we need close at hand but never look really pretty. Mine hold excess clear blocks, additional cardstock, and punch boards. I mentioned how I would share with you how I store my scraps for my 8.5 by 11 cardstock. And that's what these are. Those white cubes also come from Ikea. They're very inexpensive. I want to say I paid mm, between $12 and $15 for them. But inside there, you're going to find that I have an accordion sorter. Now, these were intended for bills. They typically have numbers 1 through 31 on them. But all I did was I used self-adhesive post-it note labels, and I put the colors in alphabetical order, and this is where I keep all my scraps. I will link to a prior video about the storage system if you want more information. I opted to put them in the cubes because it just looks a little bit better and definitely keeps those accordion folders sturdy on the shelf, although I've had no problem with them. I did also purchase a two by two Calyx unit here at the bottom. That file tray is an insert from Ikea that fits right inside that cube. I hope that's provided you with some inspiration and some organization ideas. Make sure you come back next week for part three in my Ikea craft room tour. If you missed part one, head over to Lisa's Stamp Studio here on YouTube or to my website at lisasstampstudio.com. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Bye.